We're continuing on with how to know when we're in the last of the last days. Because when we're in the last of the last days, there's certain things we ought to be doing. So we're first setting uh, confidence in the fact that this is the last of the last days. So let's go to Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. Writing by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul began to give us things to look for so that we know what season we're in. And when we see all of these things coming together in our society and in our world, then we know that this is, in fact, the last of the last days. All right? So we started through this list over the last couple weeks. In this day in which we live, are men lovers of their own selves? They are. Are they covetous? Are they boasters? They are. Are they proud? Are they blasphemers? Yes to all of them. But tonight I want us to look at the next few. How about disobedient to parents? The Lord expects all children to obey their parents as long as the parent is not doing something harmful uh, or, or morally or physically harmful to the child, right? Let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 20. These are the kind of things we normally go over in children's church, but... It's good for you to know what we teach them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. How about Ephesians 6, 1? Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. I tell you, he said we're to honor our mother and father so that we can live a long time on the earth. There's a promise that goes along with honoring your parents. Now listen, if you didn't honor your parents, then you can find another scripture. There's a whole bunch of scriptures in there that say things, you know, that can extend our lives. And some of us, you know, sowed some seeds. I was reading in the Old Testament where, you know, if a son or a daughter is rebellious after many rebukes in the Old Covenant, you just don't even want to know what happened to them. They took them out and the elders of the city killed them. Lord, have mercy. Aren't you glad we don't live in that day? I won't ask how many of you would be sitting in this seat. I had my days where I'm not sure if I'd have made it. Thank God for grace. Woohoo! Please, I'm not recommending you hurt your child. But uh, whenever, a, whenever a child was uh, making a scene somewhere, my mother would say, either give them what they want or what they need. Selah, just being funny. My mother was the queen of funny. All right. Uh, I think all children at one time or another test the reins with their parents. They want to know where their boundaries are. They want to know who's the boss. you got to establish that early. Uh, and so I don't think that's exactly, though, what he's talking about in this verse of Scripture because I think that's natural. Um, um, it, the word translated disobedient here is the Greek word apathes. And it, it, according to Strong's Concordance, it means someone who is unpersuadable or contumacious. See? <laughs> Don't be contumacious. The mere utterance of the word got a reaction. All right? <laughs> Unper someone who is unpersuadable means they know clearly what you expect of them, but you're unable to persuade them to obey. The second word in Strong's as a definition of our Greek word is contumacious. The word contumacious means stubbornly disobedient or rebellious. Now listen, in my estimation, when somebody's in charge whether they're a parent or a boss or a school teacher or whoever they are, if they're having trouble with people disobeying them, you need, to, you need to ask why are they disobeying. Because it can usually be one of two things. Either it's ignorance, they don't know what they're supposed to be doing. They don't know what the rules are. They don't know if you're serious. They don't know if you'll enforce it. It could just be ignorance or it could be 
uh, pure rebellion. If it's ignorance, then you can teach that away. You can explain who's the boss. Just saying. You can explain to them where they went wrong in whatever it is that they did. But if it's rebellion, rebellion has to be disciplined. Rebellion cannot be taught away. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Rebellion has to be disciplined. Uh, it can't be taught away. The scripture, in using that particular Greek word, is talking about how a sign that we're in the last of the last days is that children will be unpersuadable and stubbornly rebellious. I think there's a fair amount of that going on in our world today. Now listen, you know, the, the, there are children who are suing their parents for one reason or another. Children who are asking for emancipation at a young age. And, you know, if they're being abused or, you know, they're starving or, you know, there, there are perfectly legitimate reasons for those kind of things to happen. But there's also a lot of stuff going on, uh, you know, that I think most of us would disagree with. How, I, I, let me just ask out of curiosity. How many of you ever needed to discipline your child in public but you were afraid? Almost a lot of us. Even me sometimes I think, you know, who, you know, somebody going to turn me in for yelling at my daughter or telling her no and harming her personality or, you know, emotional abuse for saying no to the third candy bar or you know what I'm saying. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes on today. There's also, you know, kids who are so out of control, they're killing their parents. We've seen a fair amount of that more than we ought to see. Where somebody just, you know, they won't let me go out with my boyfriend, so we're going to take them out. Well, how many of you know that's about as ungodly as you can get? No parent should ever abuse or beat their child, but no parent should also be afraid to, to in a right way, discipline their child. We had parenting classes last year. We're going to have parenting classes again because I want you to understand good parenting. I want you to understand how to discipline your children, and so does the Lord in the right way. Come on, I'm getting a witness tonight. All right. So we'll let you know when those classes start up again, when those seminars start up, start up again. You know, have parents abused their children? They have. And when they do, thank God for the intervention of authorities to protect that child. And run, you know, run. Uh, uh, but telling a child no and holding your ground and giving good punishment consistent with their crime is the responsibility of every parent. You know, I had a family member who had two young sons, and, and she just said, you know, I, I'm never going to tell them what to do. I'm going to let them decide what they want to do. I'm telling you, that's like giving the keys to the inmates. You understand what I'm saying? You know, here, if you want to go back to your cell, uh, you know, you can, but if you don't, good night. You can Im imagine. She was pulling her hair out and couldn't figure out why because the inmates were running the show. You understand what I'm saying? Children need guidelines, guardrails. They're like guardrails. Rules are guardrails on the sides of the road to keep them from getting too far off in this direction or too far off in that direction. They need that kind of stability. They need those kind of guidelines. But a lot of that is not tolerated in our day. I mean, there was a study that came out by some Ph.D. that, you know, Brother Hagin used to say sometimes he wondered if that meant post hole digger. But some Ph.D. who said, you know, you, you ought not tell your children no. You ought not discipline them. You're going you're gonna to hurt their little personalities. And then they wonder why there's people killing people in schools and, you know, why, why children are disrespectful to their teachers. You know, I know most of you know this, and I'm preaching to the choir. At least I hope I am. Uh, but every time your child gets in trouble at school, it's not their teacher's fault. There was a whole lot of respect for authority that was lost in the 60s that we never have quite recovered from. Anyway. 
I'll move along. Let's go on to the next sign. Disobedient to parents is, is one. Number, the next one is unthankful. In my opinion, this one follows disobedient children for a reason. Sometimes in our society, when we have so much, when we're so blessed, we ha we're raising children, and, and our society has such a sense of entitlement. I deserve Nikes, not Kmart shoes. Do you understand? I, you know, I'm not going to eat off-brand tuna. I have a right to star kissed, or you understand, or whatever they're saying. Uh, we, t we took a young man, we took some teenagers to the Philippines with us one time, and we took a young man, and he, for the first time in his life, saw people living in cardboard boxes and shanties on the sides of the road, and he was just amazed at, at how the rest of the world lives. And he gave his testimony uh, over there. But also when he got back, he just cried and cried. And he said, I have been so mad at my mom when she doesn't have my, my favorite brand of pop in the refrigerator. And he said, I have been so mean to her uh, because she didn't carry my favorite brand. And I didn't even realize how good I had it in life. He said, I am never going to complain about soda pop again. You know, how many of you know that's a good thing? But, but you know, we, we have in some ways created this sense of entitlement. Uh, but it's in us too if we're not careful. Statistically speaking, and this is the truth, if you have a roof over your head, and how many of you have a roof over your head? If you have a roof over your head, food in a refrigerator in your house, a little bit of money in the bank and spare change in a dish somewhere in your house, you're in the upper 8% of the world's wealthy. What am I saying? 92% of the world does not have all of those things that I just said to you. Either they don't have adequate housing or they don't have electricity, or they can't afford a refrigerator, or they have no food in that refrigerator if they can, or, or you know, they don't have a bank account because every dime goes right back out, and there's no spare change in a dish because they're using every penny to, to uh, survive every single day. You know, they walk miles for water. It's trying to get clean water. I mean, it's just amazing once you get out of our American bubble how the rest of the world lives. And you would think with all of this affluence, you would think with all of the blessings that we have, we would be the most grateful people on earth. But we're not. Why? Because it seems like the more we have, the more we want. The more, we're never satisfied. I was sitting there this afternoon at the computer thinking about this while I was writing, and Madam Blueberry popped into my head. Who knows who Madam Blueberry is? You must have small children, yeah, uh, from the Veggie Tales. Madam Blueberry was unhappy, so she kept going to Stuff Mart, trying to buy stuff to make herself happy, this giant blueberry did. She filled her house so full of stuff and it still didn't make her happy. So she went back and got more. And she went back and got more until, you know, her house in the tree was so full, her house fell out of the tree and she lost all of her stuff. And when she got down on the ground, she came across, let me see, I looked up the name of the onion. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Annie the Onion. And Annie the Onion was so happy and so grateful with what she had. And she listened to Annie the Onion song, which said, a grateful heart is a happy heart. It's so true. When you're never content, when you always have to have more, when there's always something better that you feel like you need or you have to have, you're never happy. But when you're thankful for what you have, you can be so happy. 
You know, when I, I, was, th I was a missionary in a third world country, and uh, it was bad at times. The way we stayed, the way we traveled, the way we did. You know, I stayed in huts made out of manure with no windows, with animals coming in and out all night long. I sat on the manure floor and ate rice out of banana leaves with my hands. Uh, one place we went, the food was so full of bugs, there were too many to pick out, so we just ate them. One night, I was in a hotel, and I don't know what was in that bed or in that pillow, but I woke up the next morning, and I had like 70 bites across my face. Something was just crisscrossing me in the night, eating on me. Uh, I mean, I looked like I had the chicken pox. It was terrible. Uh, you know, I, I had rats in my room. I, I mean, it was rotting rat carcasses in the hallways of where we stayed. And I, I mean, it's just incredible uh, what all I experienced. But how many of you know, when you're in conditions like that, it makes you grateful? We had this thing going where we dream every day of what we were going to eat when we came home. Russ wanted his mama's pecan, his grandmama's pecan pie. You can imagine Russ saying that, can't you? His grandmama's pecan pie. Judy Jo said she was going to eat a whole can of Prego with a spoon. A whole jar of Prego. <laughs> I remember what I wanted. I just wanted candy probably. It was so funny. You know, everything I read online before I went said take food. So we went to the country of Greece first, and I had a whole little suitcase full of food. I mean, literally, the whole thing was full of food. And the rest of the team laughed at me. They made fun of me. And so I almost left that suitcase of food in Greece because we were planning to go through Greece on our way back home. And I almost left that suitcase there. Thank God I didn't yield to their stupid heads. You know what? It wasn't two weeks till they were lined up at my door, and I am not exaggerating. I, I had one bag of M&M's, and Judy, Joe, and I would ration them. We each got two M&M's a day. I am not even kidding. I, we were eating God knows what in an open-air kitchen with birds flying in, getting in our food. It was just, I made Russ a tuna sandwich made out of just tuna and mayonnaise. It's all I had. He cried. He cried as he danced around the room and ate that sandwich. You know what? When I came home, I was so grateful for my clean bed that I could lay in and not be chewed on at night. I, I was so grateful for clean food to, to, to eat, clean water to drink. Listen, one place we went, the latrine was literally against the side of the well. As you look in the well, it's, it's, full, it's covered in green scum and frogs. All right? They, they got some of that water, and the man pulled out his sweaty shirt. It was soaked in sweat. And he ran that water through his shirt and gave it to us as filtered water. I appreciated clean water when I got home. I took a backpacker's water purifier. Listen, I was a good Girl Scout. We ever get in a crisis, y'all ought to hang with me. <laughs> I try to research. I don't have as much time now, but I, I tried to research and, and figure out what I needed and buy what I needed. You know, merciful God, but my point is, it's amazing what you're grateful for when you've done without. When you haven't had, the littlest things can make you so happy. You know, here in the States, I don't even know that Russ would have eaten a tuna sandwich made out of just tuna and mayo. But there he cried and danced as he ate tuna and mayo on bread. It's amazing what you can be grateful for. A thankful heart is a happy heart. It's true, not just in the world of veggie tales, but it's true in life. 
So say thank you every day. A grateful heart in a child will keep them from being stubbornly rebellious. But listen, it doesn't just apply to children. When is the last time you thanked your parents for everything they did for you? For the sacrifices they made, for the struggles they went through to provide for you. And if your parents have already gone on or it doesn't apply to you, when's the last time you thanked your heavenly father for everything that he's done for you? Listen, a grateful heart is a happy heart. Not just in veggie tales, but in life. We have so much to be grateful for. We just don't realize how the rest of the world lives. We just forgot what it's like to, to, to not have salvation. We forgot what it's like to live racked with guilt over the sins that we committed. We, we've forgotten what it's like to live uh, in bondage to addiction, living in bondage to the, the lies of the enemy and, and, and the lusts of our flesh. He's delivered us out, and he is so worthy of our thanks. Let's go to Psalms 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. There's another scripture that says he daily loads us with benefits. Glory to God. That means every day you can take your trailer and back it up to the loading dock of God. Boop, 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 boop. Stand there and get your load for the day. The Bible says his mercies are new every morning. His provision is fresh every single day for you. His love and his mercy and his compassion are there every single day whenever you need it. Glory to God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all thine iniquities. Glory to God. Do you remember when you first got forgiven? Do you remember what that felt like? Just to know that you're clean and you're right with God. And all that you did is now washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. Listen, we, not, we ought not ever take salvation and even forgiveness for granted. He forgives all of our iniquities. Oh my goodness. We have so much to be grateful for. You know, I don't have a testimony of being a gangster, you know. I was born on the pew almost. Mostly lived my life for God. A few episodes of in the ditch, but I didn't live there. I climbed back out and went on. But even people like me, I have so much to be grateful for. Just to live with a clear conscience every day. I can lay my head down on the pillow at night and sleep like a baby. Knowing my sins are forgiven. And I'm right with my father because of the blood of Jesus Christ. What a precious gift that we should be thankful for. He heals all of our diseases. All. All. That's one of those promises that you can latch on to no matter what's wrong with you. Whether it even has a name or doesn't have a name. This scripture says he heals all of our diseases, no matter what it is. Healing is for you. Jesus took stripes upon his back so that you could walk in health. You know, when I was watching the passion of the Christ, I know there was some things in there that, you know, you can't prove by scripture. 
But by and large, it was amazing and hard and awful all at the same time. And I sat in that theater with everybody else and I cried while they whipped him. They beat him until he didn't look like a man hardly anymore. At one point, he was just kind of falling over the thing, and he stood up and gave them his back again. Why did he do that? For our healing. Right there in that theater, I said, Jesus, if you did that for me, for my healing, I'll never again just yield to sickness and disease, to honor you, I'll resist. To honor you, I'll fight. To honor what you did for me. He heals all our diseases. Verse 4, he redeems our life from destruction. Glory to God. We, how many of you know the Bible says there's cruelty in the place, in in the uh, places of, of, In the habitations of darkness, that's what it says. There's cruelty in the habitations of darkness. How many of you know that's true? He delivered us out of destruction, after destruction. I could stand here the rest of the month and tell you, uh, well, it's only tomorrow, but uh, I could stand here for another month beyond that (laughs) and tell you story after story of how he's rescued us, how he saved us from destruction, how he saved us from accidents and injuries, how we were led by the Holy Ghost, where to be, when to be, what to miss, and he delivered us out of everything the devil tried to throw at us. He redeems our life from destruction. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. He's a good father. He satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Glory to God. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Are you oppressed? Somebody not being fair? Somebody's not being right? You, the Lord said he would execute righteousness and judgment. Glory to God. You can trust him to take up your cause. You can trust him to make things right by you. Verse 7. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful. He is merciful. You know, Ephesians says we were lost in our sin, but God. Those are my two favorite words in the Bible. But God, it answers any situation. I have sickness in my body, but God. My checkbook says empty, but God. My kid's been hit with a stupid stick, but God. But God, what do you need? What do you need? But God answers it. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, Ah, plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. Verse 10, he hath not dealt with us, though, after our sins. Aren't you glad? I'm so glad he didn't say, girlfriend, when you get your act together, you come back and see me. How many of you know I'd have never made it back? He didn't deal with me after my sins, nor did he reward me according to my iniquities. He has not rewarded you either according to your iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. Verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. I tell you, I don't know if you know it, but east and west never cross. North, south, north, south, east, and west. How many of you know this way is always going to be east? 
I can keep going this way all around the globe and it's still east. Do you understand? East never becomes west. East is always east and west is always west. They never overlap. They ne That's how far he's removed our transgressions from us. We don't ever have to meet him again. Glory to God. Glory to God. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame. He remembers that we are but dust. As for man, I was going to tell you a story, but I don't have time. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. How many of you know, based on eternity, 80, 120 years is nothing in the, in the span of eternity. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. Verse 17. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. And is righteousness unto children's children. Verse 18. To such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his, thrones in the, his throne in the heavens and his kingdom ruleth over all. Verse 20. Bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength. Aren't you glad for angelic help? Glory to God. I'm I got a big bad angel. Glory to God. I I have seen him in my heart on occasion when we're going overseas. I can tell you what he looks like. I have a big bad I don't got one of them little tiny flying cherubs, you know. I got one of those that got a duck to get in the room kind of guys. So do you. Aren't you glad for angelic help? We are never alone. We are never alone. Bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength, strength that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. They work for you as you speak his word. They hearken unto the voice of his word. Verse 21, bless you the Lord, all you his hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Verse 22, bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. We have much to be thankful for. Yes, the world is getting more and more ungrateful, but it ought not be seeping into the church. We have to stir ourselves up to be grateful. But we need to be grateful. Amen? So what I want us to do is I got another 30 minutes of teaching, but bump it. What, what we're going to do right now, just come back next week, you'll get it. Uh, what we're going to do right now is I want everybody to stand up, and we're going to stir ourselves up to be grateful. I want you to thank him. I want you to thank him for what he's done for you. What's that old song? Count your blessings one by one. Count your blessings. See what God has done. You know, if you count your blessings, you're not going to have time to be depressed. You're not going to have time to be sad. You're not going to have time to be upset because we are so grateful. <laughs> oh, Father, you have blessed us, your children. I just read that entire psalm, Father, that's full, full of things things that we can thank you for. Oh, I thank you. I thank you for forgiveness of sins. Who are we, Father, that you should love us? Who are we that you should know our names? Oh, but you loved us when we were all together unlovely, when we were away from you, not caring about you, not caring about one thing you cared about, taking your name in vain. You loved us. And you sent your son to die for us while we were yet sinners. You didn't wait until, Father, we got our act together. You came and helped us get our act together. You came and got our act together for us. Glory to God. You declared us righteous. You made us righteous by the blood of your very own son. Lord, you gave us your best. You gave us your best. You gave us that which meant the most to you 
you. Oh, the life of your only son. And we are forever grateful. We are forever grateful for that blood that flowed down Calvary's tree. We are forever grateful for that blood that's washed us from all iniquity. That blood that's washed away every sin that we've ever committed. Lord, we are so grateful for peace of mind. We're so grateful that you made us righteous, that you put us in right standing with you. Father, we're righteous, not because we're anything, but because you're everything, because you purchased our righteousness with the blood of your own son. And because of that, we can stand here before you righteous in the righteousness you made for us, the righteousness you gave us. We stand before you now and we thank you for it, Father. There is nothing worth more than peace in our minds, peace in our life, Father. I'm so grateful grateful that I'm right with you. I am so grateful that I can lay my head on the pillow at night and sleep like a baby knowing all is right between you and I, knowing that my sin is forgiven, knowing that I'm on my way to heaven, knowing that you love me. I am so grateful, my God. I am so grateful that you do heal all of our diseases, Father. I'm so grateful that Jesus stood there and let them beat him. They let him put those stripes on his back so that we could walk in health. 2,000 years later, we can appropriate what happened that day in Jerusalem, half a world away. I thank you, Father, that we can reach back with the hand of faith and touch what Jesus did for us. And with our faith, we can pull it into today, pull it into today and appropriate it into our bodies. That which you've done for us, Father. I thank you for health and wholeness in everybody in this place. I thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. I thank you for your compassions. They fail not. Your compassion, it fails not. Your mercies are new every morning, Father. And I am so grateful. I am so grateful, Father, that you don't give up on us, that you keep working with us day after day, week after day after week, month after month, growing us up in you, taking us on from glory to glory, taking us on from glory to glory, giving us the opportunity to know you, to experience your presence, Father. Oh, this, this church, you've come to this church. You've come to these people, Father. Your Holy Spirit is here when we worship. Your presence is here when we worship. And we are so grateful, Lord. Lord. We are so grateful that you're mindful of us. We are so grateful, oh, that you loved us enough not to leave us the way you found us, but to change us by your blood. Change us, Father, by your spirit, and I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, you're such a good father. I thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. I thank you that the Holy Spirit is with me always. I thank you for angelic help every day of my life. I thank you for the angels that camp around those who fear you. And Father, you know we fear you. Therefore, we have angels that camp round about us. Ha, 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 ha. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear you. Ha, ha, They encamp around. They encamp. They make a camp around us because we fear you, Father. And you've given those angels charge over us to guard us in all of our ways. And they'll bear us up in their hands lest we even dash our foot against a stone. I thank you those angels that encamp around us, they hearken unto the voice of the word. As we speak your word, as we speak your word, they're quick to go and make it so. 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 They hearken, they hearken unto the voice of your word. That that vo the, the word that's given voice to, the, the word that we give voice to, they hearken unto it and they go and they make it so. And I thank 
thank you for it, Father. I thank you for the honor of knowing you. I thank you for the honor of knowing your spirit. I thank you for the honor, Father, of knowing your word. Thank you for bringing us to a place where we could be taught your word, where we could be taught your ways. Father, that scripture says the children of Israel saw your acts, but Moses knew your ways. And I thank you that you didn't just allow us to see your acts from afar, but you have shown us your ways. You have shown us your ways so that we can walk with you and talk with you and know how to operate the kingdom of God, Father. Oh, we know how to function by the unction. Ha, ha, ha. Because you taught us to. I thank you for the knowledge of your word. I thank you that you, Holy Ghost, divide that word severally to each of us every time we come together. If we come hungry, if we come hungry, you'll meet us exactly where we are, Father. I thank you for it. I thank you that you divide that word to those who just got born again, to those, Father, who have served you all of their life, 30, 40, 50 years, Father. You divide the same word and feed them all, and I thank you for it. I thank you for the comfort we find in your word. I thank you for the assurance of your word that has meant so much in our lives. Father, you said that you would never leave us nor forsake us. You said that you would be with us always till the end of the age. You said that you would always cause us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, I thank you for it, Father. I thank you for it. Ha, 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 ha. Oh. I thank you we go from glory to glory, from victory to victory, from glory to glory, ha, 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 from victory to victory, ho, 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 I thank you for it, Father, ha, 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 ever, ever more conformed to your image, ever more understanding your grace, ever more understanding your mercy, ever more walking in your love, ever more walking in your power, seeing the demonstrations of your spirit. F Father, I thank you. Ha, ha, ha. You didn't just want to be with us. You moved right smack on the inside of us. You moved into human flesh. Oh, you can't get any closer than that, God. We're so grateful. We're so grateful for your love. And Father, while I'm aware that the world is becoming less and less grateful for anything, it's always amazing to me how ungrateful some people are, how ungrateful some situations are. But Father, I am grateful. I am grateful. Father, help us never to act like spoiled children. Just taking it all for granted and saying more. Give me more. But help us to be like the lepers. The leper who came back and said, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you did for us. Thank you, Father. While the world is getting darker and darker, we're going from glory to glory, from victory to victory. Ha, ha, ha. And I thank you for it. Thank you for hiding us in the pavilion of your presence. Thank you, Father, that you've insulated us in a place where we can partake of you while the world is going from misery to misery. We can partake of your love. We can partake of your goodness. You've given us you, and we are forever grateful. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen.